Hey everyone, Paul at ISM. So today we've got part two of our Great War Hobby F15 build. Um, this is where we were at last time. We got all the cockpit assembled, the seats, instrument panels primed, painted in their base colours. Um, they've all dried, obviously. There was a question on the forum by George, who's building this uh, with his son side by side with me um, about the ejector seats not fitting properly. Now, when I first looked at them, I thought they actually just slotted in there like so. Uh, and I was like thinking, okay, yeah, they don't actually fit very well. But if you look at them, each cockpit, sorry, each seat has three locating lugs just on the back, just there, there, and there. And in the rails and the seats, which you can see, if we can get it to focus, just there, each one of these rails has a groove in, uh, and the seat literally slots in the top, like so and slides in. Now I'm not going to push it all the way down because it is quite tight and it is hard to get it back out. So if you're building this kit, literally get them all painted then push them in. They will fit and they do push all the way down properly. Get them out a bit of a pig and as you can see, by me removing them I took some of the black paint off the back. Uh, now whether this is noticeable when it's in, it is a tad. So what I'll do, they can have a very quick um, Quick spray in the spray roof when we get some other parts painted in a bit because I know there's other parts need painting in black. We'll give these a touch up ready. So that's it, that's how they fit in. Um, I didn't realise myself and I thought exactly the same thing and I was a little bit worried at first, but knowing how good these kits are, I thought it was going to be a little bit unusual that they didn't fit in. So um, they're all ready to go, that's exactly where we were last time. So today, what I'm hoping to do, if I flick forward, I'm hoping to get us to this stage, which is all the cockpit tub assembled, uh, all the parts hand painted, I'll go through those in a second. Uh, a bit of a wash in there, we'll use my highly thinned XF1 wash on the side walls, maybe the base and on the seat, just to accentuate a bit. I'll see, I'm not sure yet which way I'm going to do it. Uh, and then we'll use some of uh, UMP, probably concrete wash like I did on the F16, to really accentuate all the instrument panels. These are painted black. Uh, I'll run through it in a minute and then we'll accentuate all the buttons, pick out some of the button detail and then we've got decals to apply. Yes, quite a lot of decals. Um, Cohen saw this instruction the other day and thought the call outs there were actually paint. No, every one of those is a decal. So there's probably over 40 decals to apply on these two instrument panels. But, as you can see, they are well detailed. They are very nice, so it is worth doing, paying a little bit of time, it won't take that long to do. Um, so today, what we're going to do is, obviously we got all the base crawl on this last time, we drilled out the ejector handles, the harness release handle, so we've got the seat backs, seat base to paint, um, this goes out for 307, Mr. Hobby, which is FS36320, uh, that's a light grey, what we'll do, we'll find a colour appropriate in uh, Vallejo model colour, because that's my preferred uh, brush painting paint. Uh, we've got a few detail parts to pick out in Mr. Hobby 329, which is not listed, and I've no idea why they do this every now and then. Every now and then they'll show a paint call out, and there's one in there. So I'll Google that and find out what that is in a little bit for us. Uh, not a problem at all. C66, which is a bright green on what looks like an uh, oxygen tank, is it on the side? Uh, and that's basically all the seats assembled, so that will be, we'll dry brush that on a light grey to bring out all the detail. Um, we'll see if it needs a wash, obviously the F-15 is it's not a really old aircraft, but it's knocking on a little bit, so how well weathered it would be, I'm not sure. I do have a couple of reference books on the MacBook, uh, I'll have a look and I can find an appropriate screenshot, I'll post it up on the video as well. So that's basically it on the seat, just a little bit of detail to pick out, nothing major. Uh, there's a couple of decals for the side of the seat, which are shown there. Um, so they'll go on when we start doing instrument panels, so that's no problem at all. As for the actual copy tub itself, everything's painted, we've done all that last time. Everything's assembled, we did all that last time. Uh, obviously all we need to do now is the... Um, the side control buttons, they need painting in a flat black. So we'll mask them off. I'm not going to hand paint them, I'm just going to mask them off quickly and we'll spray them in the spray booth. While we're doing that, we'll touch up the ejector seats. Uh, copy controlled sticks, uh, they just need 317, Mr. Hobby, 
which is a grey, so they can stay the colour they are now. And they just need the top of them picking out with a black, so that's not a problem at all. Um, again, we've got the top cowl in there. I don't think we cut that off last time, but we will do today. And that's in a black, so we'll batch all this together, all the black parts, get those all painted up. Uh, the side walls are just 317, which we've already done, which is those. So they'll just get a wash. Uh, we'll do that in the dark. Uh, sorry, the XF1 thin. Not really, you know, overly weathered, but just to pick out the detail. Uh, and we may dry brush it a little bit with some of the light grey we use on the seat. I'll see what it looks like. And then the main job for today is these decals. So that's the B. We're not doing. Uh, sorry, the Israeli B. We're not doing that one. Uh, we've got the D. So we've got all these decals. As you can see, if I zoom you in a little bit. So there are quite a few, um, there's well over 20 there, and if I just move this because I'm knocking everything over, and then there's the rear instrument panel there, so not as many on the back. Uh, again the call out is 317 which is the FS grey we did last time, same on the front so there's nothing to actually pick out with paint, uh, and it does give a good effect, sorry, good, give a good effect, got tongue tied, uh, because it's exactly the same way I did the MIG, and then hopefully uh, we'll get this, these front fuse large halves together, Maybe you can get them glued, we'll see how far we get, and then that leads us on to put the nose radar in, nose cone. Now, I'm not sure, because I've just been reading ahead, uh, I'll zoom it out a little bit, sorry, or in. Uh, it's given the option there for having the nose cone open. Now, I don't know if we can do both. I'm not sure. Um, it'd be nice if we could, but I'm not sure if we can. We'll come to that when we come to it, but it is telling you to cut it off those lugs at the top if you're going to keep it shut. And if not, you can have them open. So I don't know if it's either or. But either way, I think it's going to need a little bit of uh, weight in the nose. So if you're choosing to have the nose open, uh, like so, you may want to put your weight in here before you put this front piece on. So it's not visible in the uh, radome itself. But we'll come to that in part three. Uh, we won't be dealing with that today. So, first things first. Uh, I think we will we'll paint those parts black. Um, touch with those seats black and then they're ready for um, uh, picking out the detail with brush paints and what have you. So, leave that there as our reference. Right, so masking. So, we've got the front to do just along the side and a little bit at the back. So, nothing too tricky. So, what we'll do, I'll just mask one of these parts quickly. I'll do the rest off camera and come back. You know, be sent me masking every single part. Um, so to mask those, because it's a slight curve, we'll have some of the Jammy Dog tape and we'll use the medium, I think it's like a 2mm one is it? We'll see what this conforms like around the surface, because what it is, is like a, there's a very very slight bend, just in the top, so you need to put one piece across like so, and then what we'll do actually, we'll cut it. And we'll put the other piece underneath, on top rather. It's just a case of laying them up where you need them, get some tweezers. Make sure you're not covering any of that detail. Look, I'm going to pull my camera back a bit so you guys don't go out of shot. So there we go, you can just see that slight curve there now. Cut off that excess. Don't want that getting in the way. I have to excuse any noise outside today. We've got major resurfacing work done on the road. They're ripping up all our uh, pavements and replacing it with tarmac, which is going to look awful. But apparently, it's harder wearing. More importantly for them, it's cheaper, and obviously, they're going to use up the rest of their budget by April. And there we go, on cue there's the noise. So it's overly noisy, I do apologise. I did contemplate putting off the film of this to another day, but they're here for three weeks. So we don't have much choice really. And because I'm talking to you guys, I'm not concentrating on doing, just going to snip that a bit shorter. Yeah, so the, the road's in absolute turmoil at the minute, I've got everything dug up. I can't get out the driveway either. 
So it looks as though you guys are stuck with me. I wish this masking tape would stick with me, because it won't bloody stay down. There we go. It's very, very good stuff. This is jammy dog tape, but it's not the stickiest masking tape in the world, which is good. But it's also a little bit of a pain sometimes, so let me just cut that there. Hopefully we can get that to... Fit in there like so. There we go. So it's just a case of going around each one, masking it off. You could brush paint this, but I prefer to airbrush it. It gives a smoother finish, a better effect. Uh, I don't mind spending the time masking up at all. I'll have this done in about 20 minutes, uh, just because I'm chatting to you guys on camera. Um, so, I'll give it that little stuff. Like I said, it's good masking tape, but it is quite low tack, which has its uses because you're not going to be pulling paint off with it, but getting it to stick sometimes, it'd rather stick to your tweezers. Than your actual model. And I've got my Labrador snoring in the background. Here we go, a little nudge with the foot, she wakes up. Like I say, quite fiddly. So much easier doing it off camera because I can get right in. Get it all in there. So there we go. What I'll do is just snip that little part. Fold it over, job done. A little bit of that excess we had before. Cover the front up. And there we go, there's one done. So as you can see, it's fully masked inside, all the panels ready to go. That's ready to paint. Once these are all masked off, just a bit of tape on the ejector rails. And a tape over the middle to cover everything else, protect it from the black, and we're done. So I'll get all the others done and we'll come back in a second. Okay, there we go. That's all masked up. So, probably about 20 minutes. What I've done, we've got all around the edges where these are going to be black, so everything around the, the side detail is. The side of the uh, inner walls are masked off, the back is on each one. Now, what I'll do, I'll spray them. If we get any black overspray inside, I can just touch it up at any point. Uh, because because it's lower than where we're spraying it, I can actually really touch it up whenever. So I'm not too concerned about that, but that's ready to go. So we've got that to spray in a black. I'm not going to do a flat black, we're going to do a Mr. Hobby H2, which is the equivalent of Tamiya uh, X1. Um, so it'll give it a bit more of a, not a sheen, but it won't be as dead flat as the seats. I wanted the seats flat black, because when I dry brush them, they're going to really show their effect really well. Which is what I wanted. So we're going to paint this in the H1, touch these up in the flat black, and we'll also spray this in the H1 as well. This is that instrument, uh, sorry, that cowling that is shown there. Um, so I cut it off the sprue, um, and I'll give you the opportunity, me the opportunity to show you our brand new UMP products, which are due out very, very soon. Um, so I'm just going to. Turn the excess away. So these show these very quick in a new show, but here they are. These are pre-production ones I've got. Uh, there will be three in the set um, when they come out, which will be very shortly after this video is released, most probably. So uh, UMP Thinny Sticks. So that's a Thinny with a T H at the beginning. Um, so what you've got is you've got your normal thin stick one end, and that goes to a larger. Uh, sander the other. So you've got the beauty of a two-in-one sander there really. Uh, three grades, you've got a 1200 uh, on one which is the equivalent of the smoother side 
on off sponges. You then got the 240 uh, on another, but I haven't got that one yet. Um, so basically, you've got both gritter on the black, one on each side, so quite a smooth one. A nice, what I call general purpose one. And then we've got the white one, which is the 180 grit, which, you know, for all your tough spots with super glue or what have you. Um, you've got it there. So I've been testing these now for a few weeks off camera, uh, trying to keep them out of shot of you guys, uh, which isn't always easy. Uh, but there they are. Uh, they are superb. You've got, like I say, you've got your big end here. This is the 1200 one. I'd probably use this more for finer detail. If I was doing this normal, I'd be using the 240 grit one, but I haven't got one yet. I'm waiting for mine to be delivered from Lee, because Lee's got them all. Um, and literally, you can go around, use the flat edge, just to tidy up any areas that need sanding. And then if you come to a point, I'm not saying you do on this, but you've got a real thin area, you can actually get right in there. Nice and precise because you're only sanding that small cross section there. And job done. So these are proven very, very handy and are really going to complement our existing range of sanders superbly. So there you go, guys. There's a the new products. Uh, first real look at them. Like I say, Lee did a very quick flash of them on the new show. But as they're due out very soon, I've got no problem showing to you on this. So I just tidy this up. Like I said, the beauty of these, you've got a thin end, one end, thicker end the other, so if you've got a big surface area to sand or a smaller one, you can really pick and choose. So let's pop those out of the way. Now I'm going to test fit this where it goes, which is just... Let's have a little look, see... Alright, ah, there's two little lugs there, yeah, that's fine then. Gotcha, so fit in. Uh, like so, and that's on the top of the instrument panel, right, that's great. So that's ready to go, this is ready to go, we've got a very handy little hole in it, which we can pop a cutter stick in, which makes spraying stuff very easy. Uh, like I said, we're going to paint these in H1, uh, Mr. Hobby, sorry, H2, Mr. Hobby Black, and uh, just making sure there's nothing else I've missed. No, nope, nothing at all. So we'll pop over the spray booth and get these a coat of black. Okay, I'll go with the flat black first, just to quickly touch this up. Um, use the hardest steam back evolution, 25 psi, just as normal, and then we'll um, paint up those other parts in the H2 black. Just a little drop of thinner, a little bit of a mix, and away we go. So, plenty of good builds on the forum at the minute. Um, the Steel Rain and the Bombers, uh, GB and SIGs are doing really well. I'm going to put the spray booth on. Um, some real interesting entries on there. So really looking forward to how those turn out. Uh, not looking forward to judging them. No, I'm joking. Uh, it'd be no problem at all. But there's plenty of good entries already, so really looking forward to that. Um, plenty of upcoming group builds as well throughout the year. So I think we're pretty well stocked throughout the year for SIGs and group builds. No problem there at all. It'll be an interesting year for sure. Watching Cohen's video today, um, the deer hair that George sent him, fantastic. I can imagine that being very, very handy in dioramas. I know Cohen might really rates it for grass on dioramas. Look at the size of that bag, he's, uh, he's set for life there, mate. He's certainly got a hell of a lot of it for last year. I'm very generous with the uh, the figures and the pair of asses. That's the first pair of asses you've had in the post. Uh, well, I hope it is, anyway. But no, very generous. and Doing that swap with Freddy for the T90. That'll be awesome as well. Very, very lucky. Like I say, we're just touching it off. As you can see, we've done there now. So I'll put that to one side. Grab the other one. Like I say, these do fit in very easy, but 
if you're going to put them in, put them in once and leave them be. Just taking them back out just takes your paint work off. Not worth a hassle. They do fit in. I guarantee they fit in, so you shouldn't have any problems there at all. They're both touched up, so we'll pop them to the side out of the way. I'll lock that off for a second while we uh, do a colour change. Because we're going to get rid of the flat black and put in the normal black. So, also good to see uh, Ben, uh, the guppy, also known, making his videos now. He put his first one up the other day and did a great job there, Ben. I know it's not easy when you start out, it can be quite nerve wracking. Um, so you did a good job mate, uh, I sub to you and hopefully everybody else will sub to you as well. Uh, if you don't know Ben, Ben's a, our group build moderator on ISM, I'm sure most people know him. And he does a sterling job on there for us, keeping all the group build threads going and keeping the builders motivated. Uh, he was recently promoted to that by myself and Lee, so hopefully he'll carry on that role for some time. Like I say, he's doing a brilliant job. Like I say, if you haven't checked out his channel, I think it's T uh, Reverse 3 E, so it's like the, uh, it's a lower dash and guppy. Um, but I'll put a, a caption up on this bit now, just underneath, right here, saying his name, so you can see. Like I say, go over, watch his videos, I know he's got plenty planned. Uh, sub. And like his videos as well. Because from what I've seen the other day, he's got a very, very promising future making videos. So hopefully, he'll continue making them. Oh, I'm going to knock everything off. So, there we go. There's the black changed. Blast that out. And then we've got H2, which is... It's not going to be glossy, but it's not going to be flat because that flat black is really damn flat. Uh, what I'm also not going to do, I'm not going to bother priming the um, the cowling. We're going to paint. I'm just going to paint it straight over because it's not worth putting primer on the go just to prime one small part like that. There we go. Make sure we're nice and thin. We'll pull through. Not perfectly thin, but it'll do, mate. Paint booth on. We'll do first. We'll give this a going over. So, although we sanded it, give it a dust off the brush. And then, because it's not primed, it's going to be real nice thin coats. Build it up as you go around. Every now and then, Don't get your edges. If you're going to be really finicky, get underneath as well. There's no harm. That one painted, so put that to one side and then I'll cop it. So, because we've got loads of masking, we're going to be peppering this in paint, so we're just going to very lightly coat it and move on. Like I say, don't worry, if you get overspray, I've just got overspray on the top there, not a problem, I'll touch back up the grey. A little bit. So if you've got different angles like you have on this, make sure you pay attention to those and get the brush every angle. And there we go. Should knock 
it off again. Again, make sure you get everywhere covered. Looks like it, we can start to unmask. As you can hear, they're well and truly busy out there on that road. So, I can't see out there because my, uh, I have CCTV on the outside of the house, but I, I switched the monitor over to the camcorder when I'm uh, videoing, so it's off at the minute. So I can't even see what's going on out there. But they sound busy. So hopefully what we'll get is fairly sharp demarcation lines between the grey and the black. I say we have gone over, it's not the end of the world, you can switch it back up. Got a brush painting it and I know I'm gonna have to go over that H17 again on some part of this where we have gone over. But the likes of that, we want a good demarcation over the edge. It's not perfectly straight, but not the end of the world, you're not gonna see Every single, I mean, this tape doesn't stick to the bloody model, but sticks all over my freaking fingers. Like I say, you're not going to be able to save a part of this once it's installed and in place. You know, a lot of it's going to be hidden. That's, you know, if you want to have brush paint it, go for it. It's probably going to be a lot quicker and simpler than masking. I just don't like doing things the easy way for some reason. So it took about half an hour. It took me longer on camera doing one piece than I did doing the uh, entire lot off camera. Because I can't quite get in there on camera like I normally would. And there we go. So we've got a little bit to touch up inside, which isn't a problem at all. Nice and fairly sharp demarcation. Just one bit there. It's a little bit vague, but that's not a problem at all. I'm not too bothered by that. So I'm happy with the way that looks. So we're just going to touch up inside with the FS grey and anywhere on top. Get that sorted. Okay, so we're back over the workbench. Uh, touched up all the grey um, Mr. Hobby 317 inside. Touched up a bit of the consoles in black, just where they would a little tiny bit of overspray grey, and touched up anywhere else that needed doing as well. I've also picked out the detail on the control sticks, painted them in black, as you can see. And what we're going to do now is we're going to pick out the seat colour on one of the ejector seats. Um, so it's Mr. Hobby H317, which is the same colour we did on the uh, cockpit side walls. Now I've been asked a few times what Mr. Hobby brush paints like. Obviously the lighter the colour, the harder it is to paint because the paint's more opaque. and It does take a bit more to get some coverage. Um, but they are better than Tamiya, but they're not quite as good as Vallejo. They do cover well. Uh, it's just a case of, obviously with any brush painting, Keep the coats nice and thin and don't be going over the, the paint too much if you can. Now what I need to do, I need to come in a bit closer for myself. So we're going all the way up to the top, just on that line there. We can take a few coats of this. Try and be as neat as possible. Okay, not the easiest thing for me to do is on camera, I need to make sure you guys are in shot. So what we'll do, we'll get one, we'll get a coat on, then we'll leave it to dry. And then we'll come back. Put another coat on until we're happy. So keep the paint nice and thin, don't be putting it on too thick. 
I'm literally dabbing the tip of the brush in the paint lid. Get a nice even coating. go. So we've got a little bit of paint we've lost on the edge there. I'm sure we've lost that. That's not paint, that's actually chipped away. So whether my fingers actually caught it, I'm not sure. I have to admit my uh, airbrushing skills are a lot better than my brush painting skills. As long as you can tell what it is. Then I'm more than happy. So what we'll do, we'll let all that dry. Do we need to paint the front? Yeah, just on the front there, we've got the edge of the cushion. Which is just there. Like so. And just there. And as you can see, it's nice thin. You can still see the black underneath. Obviously, covering black is a hard colour. Probably one of the hardest, if not the hardest. Should really have a pointed brush for doing these detail parts, but. get the grey in. Much up to the detail later. So I'm going to let that dry. Oh, we've got the top part to do as well. See, Chris, I'm just going to move you guys up a little bit. There we go. We seem to be struggling to get the camera to focus there for some reason. Still on shot. If you do go over, it's no hassle. Just go back with the black later on. Touch it back up, and again the beauty of Mr. Hobby Acrylics is they dry lightning fast. That's actually ready for another coat now. Keep referring to instructions, and we've got the two headrest covers there. Sorry, head restraint pads. Just need a touch up of paint. So you can blow on it to dry a bit quicker if you want. You can just paint it. Pop it to one side and let it dry it on the core. But that first coat of the grey has dried now, which is good. Pop that off there. While you want plenty of paint on the brush, it's all the coverage, you don't want too much. Because all that's going to happen then is it's going to flow off into other places. So this is all dried now, so we can come back in. For a second coat, and the second coat should cover it properly now. Isn't too boring for you lot to watch. Start watching paint dry, literally. There we go. So 
So I'm very chatty as well, just trying to concentrate. Which is easier said than done sometimes. Whether it's gonna need a third coat, I'm not sure. I've got a little bit of overpaint one side, so we're going to have to cut in black again. So once it's dry, we'll just come back in. Just there, we're going on the uh, head restraints, a little bit gone over. We need to touch up that paint lost there. I don't know what's happened there at all, because uh, I did respray them both. But yeah, no idea where that's missing. But yeah, second coat's... Pretty much cover that as you can see. I think the bottom bit just needs a tad more. Just there. It's getting quite tacky, so I shouldn't really be going over it, but we'll be fine. And there we go. So what I'll do, I'll go and paint the other one up. This one. Uh, I'm also going to paint the oxygen bottle on the side with this green. Just there and I'll touch up any other black that's come off and then we'll come back and get it dry brushed. Okay, there we go. So all the seats are done now. We've picked out all the seat cushions in gray. We've done the ejector hands in uh, yellow and the bottle on the side in green. They're both done. Uh, any paint that went over, I've touched back up with the black. They do look a bit OTT at the minute because they are just black and gray. Once these are dry brushed in a very light gray, It'll bring out a lot more detail of the seat and hopefully tie it all together. And I will give them a very light wash in Tamiya XF, uh, XF1, my highly thinned wash. And hopefully I'll tie it all together. Uh, like I say, the consoles are all done there, drying nicely. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave those to dry overnight um, to make sure they're completely dry. It's acrylic it will be, but I like to make sure. So I'll leave those overnight and we'll come back tomorrow we'll dry brush those. And what we'll do now is we'll move some of the paint out of the way for a start. As you can see, I've been very busy painting. Just put my brushes away. I like to take care of my brushes if I can, so I always put them up and out of the way. Especially these bad boys, the old Harder Steenbeck. Harder Steenbeck. The old uh, Series 7 uh, Winsor Newton brushes. Absolutely superb. So put those to one side. What we've got now, we've got the both uh, instrument displays. So I'm going to start by putting a couple of decals in um, and then I'll do the rest off camera obviously because you don't want to sit here watching me decal. And there's quite a few to go on so what we'll do, we'll pick some uh, decent sized one for you to see. Uh, like I say, I'll do them off camera. Now George who's building this with me did email me yesterday asking him was I going to bother clearing these. Now to be honest, because of the size of them, I mean if you look, some of them are absolutely minute. Uh, I'm not going to bother clearing that. I'm just going to decal straight onto it. Um, I'll do a couple of the big ones, I'll leave for a few hours, if I get any silver and all then maybe I might add a bit of clear but to be honest I probably will not need to the whole way. We have got some rather minute ones to put in so they are going to be quite tricky so what we'll do is we'll put <coughs> the Lexus A53 which is one of the biggest screens just there, we'll pop that in uh, just to show you how I do it, and you know how I do it but I'll show you doing one then I'll go off get them all done and we'll, I will come back tomorrow once they're all dry and we'll put some clear in them to make them a bit shiny. So, decals over here. So, we're looking for the A sheets. So, so four decal sheets with this, as you've all heard me complain. So, decal sheet A, which is that one. So, put all the others away you're not using because you don't want to damage them. So, you don't run the risk of. Uh, anything getting on them at all. Need a little bit of water. I'm not going to bother using my massive um, decal tray. I'm just going to use a little lid off something. The old Pringles lid. Make a good little decal tray. What we'll do, I'll have a tiny little bit of my set and it will be a tiny, tiny little bit. 
Helps if the drop actually goes in the tray and not on the workbench like it just has. There we go, oh, there's plenty. I think I got more on the bench than I did in the uh, actual tray. So we'll mop that up. Now, a little bit of water. Give it a mix. mix. Right, decals. So the big one we're looking for is A53, which is, i pull you back a little bit so you can see, which is that one just there. So very carefully cut that out, minding all the other decals there. And once you've got the one off you want, put them out of the way. So this is one we want, we'll pop that in the old Water, we've got tweezers. Where's the other tweezers we had? There we go, get that 30 seconds in there. Have a look, make sure you've got the actual one you want, which is this one. And just keep double checking where you're actually going to go. So move that out of the way. We're coming a little bit on the side camera, I think. Just on my decal setting. Now, I need my little decal brush, which is my little Italian one. This always does a vanishing trick <coughs> this year's. We'll get a little dab of that water. We'll pop it in there, like so. The decal should be ready now. So, just before this video has gone up, my technique guide on decaling uh, will have gone up as well. So, you can see exactly how I do it. So this is just a blank screen by the look of it. There we go, we've got a cocktail stick, as usual, and pop that in. Just in the case of manipulating it where you want it. So dry off my brush and we use the brush. Actually needs to be moved over a little tad. Just don't actually ruin the decal now by moving it. So if we re-wet it. That's being awkward. Let's try the old trees, let's see if we can lift the edge of it up. There we go, we've moved it. Right, we'll use the brush to get the excess water out. There we go, we got a cotton bud. Pop it in, this way needs to be careful. And once it starts to dry out, pressure on there and there we go if you can see that so that's in so that's a case a little bit of micro salt on the same brush touch it on so you get right around the edges And we let it set. So that's the case then. Once you've done all those, let those set for 24 hours and you can do what you want to. But to be honest, all that's going to need to do into this is that just all the decals on, put a coat of clear on if you want, and then flat it. Or I will probably just flat straight over it, to be honest. Uh, job done. And then you can always, if you want, put a dab of clear in each one. I see what it looks like. I may not need to flat it as long as none of the. Uh, one of them silver or you can see the edges and we're all right so we'll see how we get on but i'm going to do all the others off camera there's probably another two six, eight, ten, twelve, another 30 to do and some of them are rather small so i'll do these off camera we'll come back and it'll be the next day because i'll let everything dry overnight so i'll see you guys tomorrow okay so it's the next day uh, i've got some of the decaling done 
Uh, I'll show you quickly. I've got the very front instrument display done. I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. If we can get it to zoom. There we go. So there's about 22 or 24 decals on there. So they've all gone down well. Um, I've literally just finished them now. They've all had a, a coat of uh, microsol on top to settle them down. I'll leave that to dry for a bit and then I'll give them another coat, let it dry and then we'll come back. It'll have to be next time now because we've run out of time for today. Uh, we're at 45 minutes before we even started this. So we'll come back for next time and I'll put a bit of clear in there to make give them a glassy look. Uh, we may even put a bit of a wash on there. We'll see. I'll see what they look like. Um, and that's it. The rear one still needs doing. There's a couple on there but I knew I was running out of time so I thought I'd get the video done and get it edited quicker. Uh, and get it out to you guys quicker as well. So when we come back, we'll, both of these will be done uh, and I'll go through putting clear down to make them look basically like they are glass. Same with everything else, nothing else has been done. I haven't done any of the uh, dry brushing on the seat or anything. We'll do that next time and we'll do the wash in the cockpit, etc. Um, and we'll hopefully get it buttoned up into the fuselage halves for next time. So there we go. You may have also noticed I've lost the third camera for now. Uh, the quality wasn't great. Uh, I kept losing the audio on it, so uh, meeting the audio to it was an absolute nightmare. So I'm going to leave that be until funds allow and I can get a third camera the same as these two. Um, so we're just onto these right now. Uh, so hopefully I can get another one just like this. And I might go from this angle here. We'll keep this one because I do like this overall view. But I want a closer one. The front one was okay. It wasn't great. So I might go for an actual side on view or slightly side on, slightly in front. I'll see what the best is. So hopefully it won't be too long before I can get another camcorder. But for now you're stuck with the two cameras. So there we go. That's that ready. Um, it'll be probably at least another week before we get another part out. Uh, I've got an e-models vid to do this coming week. Uh, a couple of reviews to do for ISM, so hopefully over the next 10 days i get another one done. Uh, for those building it or looking at it with me, these are the paints I've used today. So we've got H17, which we used on the seat covers. We've got the flat black H12, which we used for the seats, and that was it today. Uh, we've got the H2, my bottles are a bit battered unfortunately. H2, which we used for the uh, instrument cowling and the console buttons on the side of the uh, cockpit tub and we've got yellow uh, which we used for the ejection handles and I'll just scoot over to my airbrush booth because I've just been testing my new airbrush um, we've got the H26 which as you can see I spilled all of my fingernail which we use for the oxygen bottles on the side of the tank um, so they're what we've used today I'll try and do this every time I'll try and run through the paints I've actually used so you, if anyone's building along you can see what I'm doing uh, but if you want an equivalent or you want a shout out uh, pop it in the comments and I'll always answer your question there. Um, like I say, if anybody wants that uh, colour comparison, give me a shout and I'll sort it out. I know Wig Wag Workshop, I think it was, wanted it, so I'll send it to you via a uh, private message on YouTube. If anybody else wants it, if anybody else uh, requests it, I will pop it on the next video. Just today, time's run away with itself today. I've got a 45 minute long video before I even know it, and the weather outside today is absolutely atrocious. It is 100 mile per hour winds and uh, we're getting battered everywhere. So there we go, so that's us for today. Like I said, hopefully not too long before we're back with another part. I'll do another photo update on my thread on ISM, um, and we'll be back very soon for part three. So I hope you like what you've seen. Sorry if I've waffled on, or uh, you've been bored to tears watching what I've been doing. It's not the most interesting thing, but I don't think it is. Um, uh, but we'll be back with part three very soon. So thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you guys soon.